What the flux ring? At least that's what you say in the comments. I saw y'all asking about flux rings and maybe some flux and magnetic questions. So we're going to talk about that today. I'm going to draw you some things about how flux works in a motor. To tell you what a flux ring is to start out, on our sealed can motors, they have an external flux ring. So it's this little thing right there and you can pull it off. It is made of steel and of course you can put it back on. The reason that we have a flux ring is to push the flux back into the motor. It is kind of what it says that it is. It is a flux ring. But you probably want to see what we're talking about here. So I'm going to start first with a brushed motor. And we are going to draw our flux paths. So we're going to have a rotor on the inside. We're going to have a can on the outside. Oh, our air gap is totally not good. Whatever. Then we're going to have magnets. We're going to have two magnets right there and right there. There we go. And these magnets, they're going to be polarized a certain way. So we're going to have both of them actually polarized in the same direction. So north is going to be the same on both and south is going to be the same on both. So we would have south on this edge and south on that edge, north on the top and north on the top of that magnet. So maybe you can kind of see what's starting to go on here, but we have essentially a pair of magnets and then we're going to have steel on the backside. Let's see if I can get this, this flux ring or back iron drawn. It's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. There we go. Good enough. Good enough. So what happens when you build a motor that is a normal motor with normal motor theory? We've got this south and this south wants to connect to the north, right? That's that's how it works. I'll draw it out. Let's say we just have a bar magnet right here. We got north on one side. We got south on the other. This is all magnets, all magnets that adhere to the properties of our universe that we know of. They have a north and a south. You can construct a magnet structure that appears to be a monopole, but really it's all south on the inside and all north on the outside. It's not exactly a monopole. You still have both, but you can construct it to where you can only perceive one on the inside or outside. But all magnets that we're aware of, they're a pole pair, north and south. And the north wants to connect to the south, so we're going to have these field lines of flux that connect around. And this might be an air, this might be through steel. There's all sorts of things that can and will connect flux. And the neat thing about it is that when you have a magnet like this, technically the flux goes out into infinity and it always comes back to its matching pair. So this magnet, if you don't define a boundary in your software, you will actually crash your computer trying to model an infinity space and flux going out into infinity. So it's just a weird thing about magnets. It can go out into space as far as it possibly wants to, and then it will make it back. It's just the way that magnetic pairs work. So what we do is we have these magnetic pairs in here, but instead of trying to short the magnet out on itself with flux going in this direction, we're trying to actually go through our rotor because our rotor does work right it spins so we're going to have flux coming out of the magnet face it's going to go through our rotor and then back into the adjoining magnet like so and then that's going to travel into our back iron all the way through and around and i didn't really leave enough space to see our magnetic flux density, but it's going to connect. So we actually have two magnets that have a pole pair of each connecting to each other through the back iron. When you have a thicker flux ring, you keep more of this on the inside. When our flux escapes into the outside of the motor, it would be 
probably flux in the middle like so. Let's just say that we have saturated our back iron. We don't have a flux ring on there. Oh no, it's gonna escape from the motor like this. It's gonna go out into air. And air is actually not a really good conductor of magnetic flux. It's, it's, uh, it's very high reluctance is what it is. So these lines are trapped, which is good. Boom, boom, boom. They're all staying in the back iron, but our back iron wasn't thick enough and we didn't put a flux ring on it. You can see, bam, there's one big old line coming through. And then we would have on the other side, the same thing. Oh, this is our magnetic saturation point. Oh, it escaped outside of the motor because we didn't have a flux ring. This flux doesn't do as much work as flux that has a shorter path. So we always have that back iron. This is a brushed motor that I'm drawing right here. And this is how it goes through it. So, ooh, yeah, that one was trapped. Good deal, good deal. Uh, and this one, yeah, that one's trapped too. So this is the more efficient flux. And it looks like, oh, you gotta have it balanced. We got one, two, three, four flux lines on that side. Assuming that we have an ideal motor, there's gonna be four flux rings, or I'm sorry, flux paths on the other side. So there you go. That is what it looks like when the flux goes through the motor and the back iron or a flux ring is extremely important because otherwise you're conducting through air. And here's our rotor. Our rotor is where we extract our power, right there. That's the complete magnetic circuit of a motor. Now, in a brushless motor, it is the exact same thing. And for this, for simplicity reasons, I'm gonna draw an end runner. So it's gonna look the same. And again, for simplicity reasons, I'm gonna draw a two pole end runner. There we go. Now we're gonna have a little air gap, which I didn't really talk about the air gap. That's kind of getting into the, the deep weeds. Then we got a stator. But the tighter the air gap, the better. Because as I said, air is not an efficient conductor of flux. All right, so here's our rotor in the middle. We're gonna have the same thing, a north and a south but we really only need one on a brushless motor because it's on the inside and it essentially connects to itself as a complete magnetic circuit. On a brush motor, you need two of them because of the way it's designed. I suppose you could probably, if you spun the coils on the outside, you could get away with a single magnet with a brush motor. That's, yeah, we'll talk about that later. That would be a brushed outrunner, technically feasible, technically possible but uh, it hasn't really been done that I'm aware of. All right, so we've got a rotor on the inside. I'll just call it uh, rotor right there. And then our stator on the outside, stator. We don't need back iron inside the rotor because the north and the south are together. And the stator itself has back iron integrated into it. So we would actually have you know, the, these lobes and these holes cut into it where our copper sits. So it'd be, yeah, let's just say a shape like that. And the back iron is integrated into the actual stator shape itself. That's getting probably more complicated than we need to today. But we would have field lines coming through, out here, through the back of the stator. Again, this is a two pole motor, so it's gonna go all the way around and then back through the inside of that rotor there. And we would have multiples of this. We'll just do a couple more field lines to show you. It's like kidney beans. Do you like kidney beans? I, I'm not a fan. I like other beans. Kidney beans just seem kind of chalky to me. Now, if I was hungry, I'd eat them. Well, our uh, flux density is a little weird here. So maybe there were some errors in manufacturing. But as you can see, it's, it's really the same drawing as this. Now, let's pretend that we didn't have enough back iron built into our stator shape. So we would have this inner flux escaping. Now, on the outside of a brushless end runner, you do have an aluminum can. And the aluminum can actually, it does no work. 
but if your flux is escaping like this, it's going to be flying through the aluminum essentially. It's going to be conducting through the aluminum. And every time this rotor spins around, this field is actually moving, right? So we've got our north and our south that's tracking in circles on the rotor and this outside field is actually moving as well as you commutate the motor and that's what's pulling our rotor around well as you turn this field anything that is conductive and inside that field is actually going to get little eddy currents in it so if our back iron on a brushless end runner isn't thick enough and we've got these field lines escaping into essentially air the aluminum housing is going to start conducting and you'll get any current losses inside your housing and it'll make your motor run hotter really because that is not doing any work except for heating up the aluminum so the stator design is really really key in brushless and of course in brushed as well but there's kind of a black art to it that again probably deeper than this video should go but what we want to do is make sure that we have captured all of that flux within the motor and we don't want it to go out so things on a brush motor that would ruin that not enough back iron like a thin can not enough flux ring if you have magnets that are thicker than what the can can withhold or you could say even on the other side the rotor if the rotor legs are not thick enough then it won't conduct enough on there and then essentially you get dead shorts on the inside of the can if you have a wrong stator shape to where your magnet is actually trying to conduct back to itself you get these eddy currents on the outside of the magnet right here and that is just lost flux it's not going into moving the motor it is going into nothing it's going into wastefulness and on a brushless end runner you can have the same thing where the north wraps around and shorts out on itself now we would prevent that by having a nice type air gap we would prevent it by having a proper tooth shape a proper tooth shape that isn't you know like tips touching <laughs> that's a that's a joke there but not really we don't want the tips of our stator shape to be too close to each other because then they will short out and you'll get these little eddy currents all over the place and the eddy currents when you're north and you're south is shorting out it does no work so there's a lot of weird design stuff that goes into the flux density of a motor to make sure that you're energy is actually available to do work and not just heating something up or shorting out on itself it's a very deep dive that maybe i'll do another video on that but that's like how do you engineer an electric motor and that could be a very 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 long video so let's see uh we talked about back iron we talked about the rotor or the stator we talked about field lines escaping the motor and how that's bad yeah we don't want too thin of a back iron if a flux ring needs to be used and the flux ring is added to make sure that we capture these outside field lines we don't want them going into air and then the same thing for a brushless motor whether it's an inrunner or an outrunner you need enough back iron built into the stator so that you don't have field lines escaping and then you need enough back iron for your rotor if it's an in runner the back iron is essentially the rotor itself either inside the magnet or if it's a four pole or higher your your support for the rotor will be the back iron built into it which hey let's just draw that real quick a four pole we would have mm, we'll just call it a, a basic rotor here there we go and then we're going to switch colors this is going to be a four pole one two three four five six seven eight edges and then we got that and we've got this we've got this and we've got that and that looks like some sort of special group that you would join symbol there <laughs> all right so we're gonna have same as the other one we're going to have let's say south on the inside here north on the outside and then the neighbors are going to be switched so we're going to have north and south and then we're going to have north and south and then we're going to have north and oh i did that wrong nope south and north i believe i did this correctly so what we're going to have now is our magnets connecting to each other i guess i'll keep this in red these are going to connect through the back iron of the rotor itself to make little field lines and we'll just field line out into 
airspace for this because this rotor is just you know it's it's just not installed into the motor let's say so the reason why four pole can actually generate more torque than a two pole is because your flux lines don't have to travel as far and we'll do uh heck let's do a quick two pole here too just to just to show you the back and forth of it so that's a north this is a south we'll do opposite here so the field lines of this would be more like more like that there you go i know i did it in the opposite colors hopefully you can see what's going on but the north and the south on this one have to go all the way around and wrap but our distance of the field lines when we have twice as many poles the distance is also half as much that means that for the same magnetic density you can actually have half the thickness of back iron because of the efficiency that it's broken up into four poles instead of just two poles so you get more room for your rotor inside and i, I realize i'm probably getting way into the weeds here but this is how the field lines would connect on a four pole here and then of course you would have a stator around there and instead of these just being connected into air once you install it into the motor it's going to go into the stator through the back iron of the stator but my point for drawing this out is that you have back iron in both your rotor and your stator on a brushless and then the same thing for a brushed your back iron behind the magnets is one part and then technically you have back iron inside the rotor itself and it's what connects the lobes of the legs together to each other so the exact same principles apply to pretty much any electric motor i say pretty much all electric motors and when the topology changes you're really just changing how those flux lines are routed that's really about it so i hope that gave you 20 more questions than what you entered with <laughs> but very long answer for a short question what is a flux ring what does it do it connects the magnetic flux lines together so you always have the fields of north and south connected whether it's through air whether it's through metal they're always coming back but our flux ring or our back iron is going to make sure that that happens in an efficient way something that's at least more efficient than air so there you go i hope that answered your question <laughs> Uh, that was really enjoyable for me though so if you got any more weird tech questions like that please leave them down below and I'll do my best to get to them and explain them in a, in a way that is maybe understandable if y'all would like me to maybe redo this video with some really good graphics or something we can try that as well so thanks as always for tuning in have a great day you've made it to the end of the video hopefully that means you liked what you saw if you want to help out the channel, you can like, subscribe, and definitely comment down below. We would like to hear new ideas from you, so be sure you let us know what you'd like to see. There are some other suggestions probably floating by my head right now that you can check out. And otherwise, we appreciate your support and your help growing the channel.